What up and welcome back to Born and Born Reviews. Rock here. And roll here. Yeah, because I want to rock and you want to roll. <laughs> okay. Roll means like move things along. Rock means just sit there and do nothing. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> if you have seen... Serious our... <laughs> issues. If you have seen our reaction to Michael McIntyre, just depends on copyright which one came out on first. On the Graham Norton show. The Graham Norton show. This will make a lot of sense. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> She still hates that chair, but look at her face. She's enjoying it immensely. And so we are here checking out some more QI. Quite interesting. And this is a very good question here. This is a very important question. 100%. But I feel like it's a very obvious answer. Why are actors so overpaid? Seriously. Just donate a little bit of that money to education since nobody seems to care about education. But what's your answer? Why are they so overpaid? Um, I would just say because the industry itself makes so much money that the actors expect to get a portion because they're the ones doing a chunk of the work. And it's not like they're going in with a gun holding up the production studios and say, hey, you better hire me. Okay, we'll hire you and we'll pay you $20 million. No. These people are, now a lot of actors, most actors have to audition and they have to hope and they're going to get paid at, what do they call it, scale or this or that before they even get real money. But the big time actors, they have worked their way up. And I'm not defending actors, but at the same time, if you live in a work in an industry where your product's going to make a ton of money, you should get paid a lot. Now, at the same time, you think about Apple and how they make tons of money on every new iPhone and this or that. Are the people that are actually creating those getting tons of money? No, no they're not. But they're not the ones also endorsing it and, you know, this or that. But it's the same with athletes. I mean, actors put in the work, athletes put in the work. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, is it worth making? 56 million, like. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And I'm a, I would assume a lot of that money gets spent fast. But still, I think the answer is just so obvious. I go back to because those movies make a lot of money. And there's a lot, maybe not so much anymore. But I remember not too long ago, maybe 10 years ago, I would want to see a movie just because, you know, Bruce Willis was in it or Will Smith was in it or Tom Cruise was in it or whatever, Robin Williams. Like, you want to check out because you just trust that they're going to make really good movies and you can't... Yeah. I mean, for a time, Russell Crowe, I could not wait because he was doing hit after hit after hit and he had serious acting chops and he still does. And so you look forward to those actors and actresses and that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. If you like our re reaction to this in any way, please don't forget to... To what, Nick? Don't forget to. To it's, what? It's your line. Cue cards are right there. No, not. Like this video. Subscribe to our channel. And hit that notification <laughs> bell to be aware of our newest <laughs> uploaded three. videos. I didn't do three. You're the one did three. I just went. Up. Oh. Boom. Lazy Daisy. You know what? I just wanted to make sure you could play both roles. <laughs> this is so many jokes, I'm not going to say them. All right. <laughs> Here she rolls. Now, here's a killer question for you, Alan. We're both actors. Why are we so grotesquely overpaid? Market forces. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in charge of the distribution of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse we can think of. Um, well, what profession within the film industry might think that they're responsible entirely for the, the way an actor conveys... Screenwriters? The screenwriter would, certainly has a lot, as yeah. far as the story is concerned, but they can't director. control, as it were, what an audience reads into an actor's eyes. So the Cameraman? The editor. In a way, the editor, ah. yeah. And in 1919, when cinema was being born, there was a, a filmmaker called Lev Kuleshov, and he proposed putting together a film in which you saw an actor looking at things, and you noticed that the audience read into the actor different emotions according to what they're looking at. 
So, yeah, so that idea, so they're looking, you know, we think, oh, they're looking melancholy because they're looking at something. Or they're looking hungry. Or they're looking they're hungry, looking, yeah. Exactly. But the actor's exactly. actually not changed. It's exactly the ah, same yeah, shot okay. as the actor. Oh, well, and this well, that's happens. the trick of acting. All actors know that. Yes, it's not to act. If in doubt, don't do anything at all. And directors will tell you. Uh, Milos famous... Forman famously shouts, Stop acting! Somebody is acting here! There's a famous uh, <laughs> Bogart one. And at the end, he looks down on some carnage. Mm. And everyone was very impressed by the emotions he portrayed. Yeah. But it, the shot had been done much later and he, the camera went down low, he stood up on a balcony and the director said, look bored. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and yeah, it works like that. And they and cut it in. It's extraordinary That's how genius. that is. It's the effect, it's the timing of the story, it's what the actor seems to be looking at and the, it's the audience that does the work. They read the emotion into the face. Oh, that's... <laughs> we've, actually, we've actually cut our own together. So you can see here, what's this emotion? Confusion. Ooh, he's looking hard at something. <gasps> Oh no, Arsenal have lost again. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful bike. <laughs> Excuse me. There you are. <laughs> Proof positive is if it were needed. Anyway, um, thanks to the Kuleshoff effect, good acting, maybe just good editing. Wow. Now, that is true. I, I would argue that it starts with a great screenplay. It starts with a great screenwriter, or more than likely, with most films today, unfortunately, it's, it's a team of people that will go in there and kind of tear that apart because they want their own this or that. But you have to have a good story. You have to have a good screenplay. You have to have good writing. You watch these, like, lower... Whatever Elegant, you're breaking my heart. or bigger budget films where the dialogue is just so noticeably bad. Like if you're not into movies, like what what do you care about? Just watch it and ask yourself, does that sound at all natural? And there's a lot of films where they go above and beyond. Like nobody talks that way. Like Dawson's Creek, like the way yes. these 15, 6 year olds talk. Yes. No one talked with that was yes. high vocabulary. But I'm getting off track. A good screenplay is super super important because it's what you know, you laugh along with the jokes, you enjoy the action and the timing and the pacing is all that good. But the editor, I would not want to be an editor because the editor just has all of this stuff, all the dailies, all the footage, all this or that. And they have to not just cut and paste and all this kind of stuff. I just felt like you're, I knew you weren't going to hit me, but, but it just felt like it was close. But they also, I would have, I mean, maybe they, no, they don't do the special effects. That's a different team, but they have to like, just put it all together. It's just, there, there's there's a lot of truth to what they say is what I'm trying to say. And we do probably read a lot into what the actors are doing. And it just makes me so sad because I so badly want to be like on a movie set for the whole filming of it. It'll probably ruin it. the magic of the movies for yeah. me. But just to see how every... I, I would just find that fascinating. Even as an intern, even as a free... Like, let me just be a volunteer. Let me just grab some bagels for you guys. I just want to spend like a month with this team and just see how they're making all this kind of stuff. And then to see it on the big screen and be like, wow. Like when Star Wars first came out, Harrison Ford said when he first saw it, he just couldn't believe it. Cause he had worked on the film, but you're you're not seeing the special effects and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And he's just like, wow, this is the movie we were making? Like <laughs> when they were making it, he didn't get like the lines and all this kind of stuff. He didn't understand what was going on. But uh, yes, absolutely the editors are a big part of it. So the question is how much do the editors make? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's going rates. Like, for example, a lot of screenwriters, it depends on how many films they have and what they negotiate and how badly they're needed. But I would say, like, an average script for an average person, you probably make, like, one to $300,000 selling that script. Which, when you if you see it as a big hit and it makes, like, $100 million, you're like, ugh. Yeah. Now, if it was me, I would take an amount but also take a small percentage of the royalty, even if it's, like, a tenth of a percent. Give me some of those royalties, as it carries on yeah. forever. And that's where a lot of actress, actors and actresses from sitcoms, they once things get syndicated and they have three or four seasons and they're doing the reruns, that's where you make serious money. For the rest of your life, you're just getting these royalty checks because you're in that thing, like the actors and friends and whatnot. Got into the wrong profession. Money-wise, absolutely. But anyways, I really enjoyed that. I love movies. I love that world, even though I've never obviously been in one. I want to. If you know someone that could hook me up, let me just be there. I will grab the bagels every morning. Let me know. Don't forget to comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time. Goodbye.